Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on Hilbert College MSM Agent E Summit 2020 Live. Our attendees are on the process of joining in. In the meantime, on behalf of all of us in MSM and Hilbert College, I hope you, your families, and all your colleagues are all safe and well. All of us are going through this invisible pandemic, and I'm sure humanity will overcome it in the coming times ahead. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen from all parts of the world. I would like to thank you all for taking time out and being here today with us. My name is Jim George, Manager Global Marketing Office, overseeing U.S. institutions at MSM, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. I'm delighted and pleased to introduce today's facilitator, Mr. Brian Phil Johns. Brian is the Director for Enrollment Operations at Hilbert College. We have three presenters for today's presentation. Our uh, presenters for today's webinar are Ms. Kim uh, Carmonte, who is the Director of Graduate and Online Enrollment. We've got Mr. William Morton and Ms. Lee Corletti, who are um, the Admissions Counselors at Hilbert College. Before I hand over the mic to Kim, I would like to run through the housekeeping requirements that are needed for today's presentation and the GoToWebinar platform. So what's today's agenda for the webinar? Yes, you'll be hearing a comprehensive presentation on Hilbert College by Kim William and Lee. As a reminder, everyone is currently muted and we'll encourage you to type in your questions and comments throughout the presentation in the Q&A session present in the control panel. So while the presentation is going on also, you can type in your uh, queries so that we can uh, take it up later on the presentation when we have the brief moment for Q&A session. Uh, and this, uh, at that time also, you can type in your questions. We have a few handouts, including the PowerPoint presentation, a flyer on life at Hilbert College, and many more on the control panel, and would request all of you to download the same for future reference. We will also have two polling sessions during the webinar, so all our attendees will have to be attentive during the presentation. We'll expect your active participation during these polls. For those who have just joined in, welcome to today's webinar on Hilbert College MSM Agent E Summit 2020 Live. So without further ado, let's kick start things off by welcoming our presenters, Kim, William and Lee. Kim, over to you. Good day, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. And welcome to the presentation from Hilbert College. We are so excited that you have taken time out of your day to join us to learn a little bit about our beloved college in Buffalo, New York. So I am the Director of Graduate Online and Student Online and Graduate Enrollment. And I also, you see the word there, student engagement. I work with the students from the start of their program to the end of their program. So since we are a small campus, you know, we can give personal attention to all of the students. Um, I'd like to take a moment to have my esteemed colleagues introduce themselves also. Brian? Hi, good day, everyone. My name is Brian Phil Jones. Uh, as uh, Jim had mentioned, I'm the Director of Enrollment Operations. So um, as it relates to international recruitment, I basically oversee the partnership and uh, overall processing for uh, both graduate and undergraduate students at Hilbert College. So uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, my name is William Morton. I am the International Student Admissions Counselor. Uh, basically, I oversee the um, students getting their application materials in, and then um, I work very closely with uh, Lee um, going from there. So, Lee? Hi, everyone. My name is Lee Coletti. I am the International Student Services Coordinator at Hilbert College. I'm also the primary designated school official. I work very closely with the students in terms of visa and immigration guidance, uh, main, maintaining their status, uh, student programming and activities as well. I work very closely with the stu students and their engagement on the campus in terms of some, some service learning as well, um, English language proficiency and development. Um, so there's several different ways that I interact with the students each and every day. Um, and I'm really excited to be able to present to you today. Uh, before we move any further, we're going to be showing you a quick video about Hilbert College and then we'll begin the presentation. Some things seem so obvious in their simplicity until you see things differently. At Hilbert College, we strive to appreciate and understand what it means to be different. 
at Hilbert College, we embrace freedom of thought. We emphasize a commitment to service. At Hilbert College, we are leaders, we are activists, we are success stories. We endeavor to be a voice for social justice in the world. At Hilbert College, we are problem solvers and clue seekers. We are helpers and entrepreneurs. At Hilbert College, we are analytical and creative. At Hilbert College, the path is different. The community, the feeling, the values are different. You are different. At Hilbert College, not only do we see things differently, but we recognize what is different. See Hilbert College. See different. Okay, um, so hope you enjoyed that video. Just a little bit about Hilbert College. We are located just outside the city of Buffalo in the state of New York. The city of Buffalo is the second largest city in New York. As you can see, we are in very close proximity to some uh, major, more well-known cities as well. Uh, not too far from New York City, Toronto and Canada, very nearby. Um, short drives to Pittsburgh and Cleveland as well. Um, so we're very accessible, but the city of Buffalo itself is located right on Lake Erie. And the city, or I'm sorry, the town of Hamburg is about 10 minutes away from Buffalo. And that is where the college is located. Um, very close to the city, very short drive. We have bus lines as well that can take students between the campus and the city. Um, so it's a very, very easy commute. Um, so as we do have some highlights around us. We have Canal Side in the downtown area. Students can, you, you actually saw a bit of Canal Side, I believe, in the video. Um, and then, of course, we're near Niagara Falls. That's with less than an hour away, as you can see in that third photo. Um, but Niagara Falls is one of, you know, the seven wonders of the world, and we are very nearby. Um, we have students who go and visit that all, all the time. I'll be hopefully taking some students come the fall. Um, but it's, you know, something that you can see is we are very centrally located and there is so much going on in this area as well. Uh, just an update on with COVID-19 and everything we've been doing. Um, CVIS, you know, through Department of Homeland Security has a, has. Um, put in some temporary guidelines. Um, so one of the things that international students are uh, limited to is their number of online enrollment uh, when they are in, on an F1 visa. Um, because of the situation, our international students who are enrolled right now are all online um, and the guidance allows them to be all online. Typically, you can only be in the one uh, enrolled course in the term, um, but because of what's going on, they are fully in line, uh, fully enrolled online um, and meeting all, uh, all regulations and remaining in status. Um, and while most of our students did return home so they could be with their families, we have had students who didn't. We have had students who have remained within the state, whether that be near here um, or you know maybe a little bit further with some family the members that they may have um, so you know with that we were we worked with the students to relocate them um, to make sure that they have all access to all the resources that they need including supplies including food of course um, and while faculty and staff uh, are also online and working from home um, they remain fully accessible to the students um, something that we of course encounter is some time differences but the faculty and staff are working very closely with the students to make the accommodations necessary um, so that they can have the interactions that and the conversations um, at a at a good time for everybody. Um, so we are making, you know, we are remaining very up to date on the New York state regulations and federal regulations. Um, you know, our, the state of New York is actually going to begin the reopen process as of Friday, um, kind of step by step. Um, but, you know, we are remaining very compliant with federal and state, uh, you know, state um, actions right now.
at Hilbert College, you know, we've got wonderful programs and, and wonderful people on campus, but where is our foundation? And our foundation is set in a Catholic Franciscan um, mission. We strive to be faithful and deep in a very diverse campus. You know, we st we strive to make our historical foundation from the Sisters of um, St. Joseph kind of the baseline of our, our college and what we embrace. And these traditions and what we strive to teach our students, these ideals of service, respect, compassion, peace, joy, hope, vision, and integrity. So besides learning book work and besides learning facts and theory, we also like to instill these ideals. So when a student leaves us, they can go out and serve their community. They can make them a better person. You know, we were founded in 1957. So in terms of, of years, we don't have a very, very long history, um, but we have a deep and a very rich history. We're a very diverse campus. And although our campus was founded in the Catholic tradition, we embrace students from all religions, all nationalities, and we welcome them to our campus. Um, so some of the key points that we'll be going through today, um, we'll talk about our small class sizes um, on how and how our average uh, student faculty ratio is one to one. Um, most of our faculty have a lot of job experience uh, that they bring with them outside of just an, a formalized education to help give students a real grasp on the, um, the field itself. Um, we have over 40 student organizations and clubs. We are a Division III athletic institution. We also offer intramural and club sports. Um, we are among one of the most affordable private colleges in West, uh, in New York State. And um, lastly, uh, we are ha we do have one of the nicest residence halls in the state as well. Um, I'd like to jump into our undergraduate program offering. Um, right here, you'll see our 16 standalone programs. Um, you'll have the close working relationship with outstanding faculty, opportunities to gain hands-on experience through internships, and discover career direction students never even considered before. Uh, based on a simulated liberal arts education, Hilbert's approach inspires a passion for learning and provides students a foundation for life. Uh, students will be prepared to start their career immediately or continue their education um, at the graduate level. Um, I'd like to note that um, as of last week, we just got approved through state uh, ed that we are able to start offering our new biology program. Um, housed in the biology um, area would also include all of the um, pre-professional tracks such as uh, pre-med, if the student is looking to go to med school, pre-vet, if the student is going to uh, looking to go to vet school, and um, pre-farm if a student is looking to go to pharmacy school. In addition to those 16 programs, um, we do have four, four plus one programs. Um, as you can see right there, um, students who are interested in uh, spending a little bit extra time with us, they do have the option to do so in these different areas. Um, a four plus one program essentially means that um, they, in five years time, they will walk away with not only a bachelor's, but also a master's degree. Uh, so the blueprint is the foundation that's set for all of our undergraduate student. It promotes the well-rounded experience over four years. And with this, the student success uh, post-graduation placement rate is 96% within six months of graduation. Um, so as you can see within the arrow, there's the first year experience, the sophomore service, junior symposium, and our senior capstone. This is really built on, this is where, you know, each year that the student you know, progresses. This is, you know, kind of what the foundation of it, what each entails, really focusing on their experience. Uh, it's, it includes the academic, the co-curricular, especially the service learning component, which is a huge part of our identity. We'll talk about that a little bit further, but this is really what the experience of the undergraduate student is built off of, um, is really set within, within all majors. Yeah, so it's uh, poll time. So let's see um, how many of you were attentive for, till this uh, till this part of the presentation. So the question is, uh, what is the student to faculty ratio at Hilbert College? So did William mention was it uh, a 12 uh, students to one faculty or was it a 15 is to one? Or did he mention 19 is to one or was it 22 is to one? Since there's only one question, so let's uh, look into the results. Uh, how how we have fared? Let's let's see how the attendees have fared for the uh, polls. Yeah. 
So it's it's good to see that nearly 60, 63% of them have given the right answer of uh, 12 is to 1. That uh, very less uh, student to faculty ratio gives that personalized attention. And I think that would be a huge advantage when international students come to study at Hilbert College. So uh, over to you, Beth. So this is an area of the campus that I just love the most is our master's degree programs. Um, at Hilbert, we offer three programs. We have a master's of public administration. Then the degree is a master's of public administration, but we concentrate in the world of health administration as a track within that program. And then we have the master's of science and criminal justice administration. So our graduate, a little bit of overview of our program. We are, since we're a small campus, we have convenient class options. Our students take classes on Saturdays only. So that gives them the rest of the week to engage in activities on campus, explore the Western New York community, and um, spend a lot of time in the library doing their research. The nice thing with Hilbert is our students take one course at a time, and each course is only five weeks long. So we take that 15 weeks um, traditional semester and put that class into a five week. So it's a very fast paced program, but it's very effective. The students finish their program in a total of 16 months from start to finish. We start the program and our students go straight through for 16 months, taking again, one class at a time every five weeks. And we're a small cohort model so students build long life colleagues, friends, and build those relationships with their cohort as they traverse the program together. Also within the program, our academics are very career centered. So we want a student to start using tomorrow what they learned in class today. Um, we have very distinguished faculty. The nice part is we do not require the GRE or the GMAT. So that makes enrolling a little bit easier in Hilbert because it's one less exam that a student has to take with our next cohort beginning on September 5th. So a little bit about each individual program. Our Master's of Public Administration. Sometimes I have to describe this one a little bit because people are not quite sure exactly what the MPA degree is. So it's a master's degree centered around the world of administration, but within the public sector. And when we talk about a public sector, we're talking about higher education, we're talking about law enforcement, healthcare, we're talking about people who work for many of the nonprofits and governmental agencies. So our students, after they've completed this program, have found jobs in government, they found jobs in the nonprofit world. Um, we have students, many have gone on to working in the human resource area, education, veterans, it's a great launching pad for marketing and public relations. And again, these skills are very transferable to the private sector. Then we move into the Masters of Public Administration Health. And again, that's a concentration, a track. So several of the courses are different where we're teaching our students to prepare them for skills to succeed in the public healthcare sector. So these are people who want to be managers, want to be leaders within the healthcare agency, their administrators. So they go on and work in hospitals, government administration that are dealing with healthcare issues, such as we're all dealing with today. Um, and then in in the states, the nonprofit agencies are very large. So a lot of our students head into the nonprofit agencies. And the third program that we have, our criminal justice administration, is looking at the world of criminal justice through the United States criminal justice field. So our students who leave this program are looking to be administrators and leaders in police departments and corrections and probation, border patrol, FBI, um, district attorney's offices. And the key to our program, or I, we always say it's the crown jewel of our program is, you know, our, our program is consists of 12 courses. So, you know, when you're looking at a graduate program, it's, you know, a fourth the amount of classes of a bachelor's program. So you're, you're trying to focus in on something very specific. So all of our students have to undertake a graduate research project. 
and that is the topic of their choosing. So at Hilbert, we provide them a research mentor. We provide work throughout the, um, the 12 courses where we weave the program project in and out. So at the end of their program, they have a very solid research project. Also taking us back, I talked about our Franciscan roots earlier on. We, they're more of a service project. So it's not something that we want a student just to make up something. We wanna connect them up with a local agency. We wanna connect them up with a hospital, connect them up with a nonprofit where they can collect data, where they can do the research and they can actually do something and have some findings that help and benefit their community. Also, some of our students have gone on to be published. So at the end of their master's level, their research pro project is publishable. So that all adds to one more tool in the toolbox that makes them a very well-qualified, very substantial student or, or potential employee for an employer. Okay, so now we'll be talking a little bit about the uh, student services and student life departments, um, how these uh, play into the student experience. So of course you're coming to college primarily for your academics, for your career uh, that you're pursu pursuing, but there's so much more to the experience as well. Um, there are different uh, offices and departments and just different areas um, that contribute to the student experience. Uh, one of the primary ones, which is the Office of Career, the, I'm sorry, the Career Services Office. Um, this is something where you can go to practice your interview skills, set up a cover letter, uh, build your resume, um, you know, really build on different skills. Uh, you, they, they offer, we offer etiquette courses. We also offer, um, you know, different ways in terms of styling. Um, so that's something that's really important to our career services, really contributes to the professional aspect. A lot of students, when they're looking into internships or job interviews, this is something they use very, very um, closely. Um, I work very closely with this office in terms of the international students because international students have a bit of a different process in terms of curricular practical training and um, occupational practical training, so CPT and OPT. So I work very closely with career services to, main, to make sure that students are proceeding the right way, that this is all being submitted um, through CVIS as well and making sure that the students are remaining in status. Um, and receiving the necessary academic credit. We also, I'm sorry, could you go back, William? Sorry. Um, we also have our community engagement office. This really plays a role in the service learning component. Um, we do, we have the component both in and out of the classroom. Um, and academic services and student counseling center, I'll talk about a bit in the next slide as well. Thank you. Um, so as I mentioned, academic services offering free peer and professional tutoring for all subjects. Uh, while our students uh, do have a faculty advisor who works very closely with them in terms of selecting courses, uh, maybe specialized courses if they have a specific interest, we also have academic services that has the uh, training to work with students of all majors, not just one area um, in particular. These people really have the skills and knowledge and training to work with students from diverse backgrounds, from diverse uh, majors and diverse interests as well. Um, in terms of uh, academic advising, uh, some personal support as well. Um, our counseling center is also available to all students, uh, residential student, students who are commuting. Um, this is a service that's available to all students at no additional cost, really helps facilitate the emotional and cognitive um, and mental well-being. Uh, mental health is very important. Um, you see a lot of it uh, being talked about, especially now during a pandemic and making sure that, um, you know, we are making sure that our, you know, our mental well-being is, um, something that we're focusing on and something that we value very much, the well-being of our students at um, at the campus. So this is a service, again, that's available to all students, uh, whether they live on campus or off campus. And I, as I mentioned, I'm the International Student Services Coordinator. Um, this is a bit of a, a newer department on our campus, um, but I work very closely with the students, students in terms of uh, professional, personal, uh, academic advising, um, a lot of providing a lot of information that uh, regarding visa and immigration. As soon as all of this started to change with COVID, I was communicating to the students constantly. You are still in status, even though you're fully online. Um, you know, you are still in status if you're studying from your home country, all that sort of stuff. But really, making sure the students are remaining in status, that they have their own, uh, you know, their full credits. Working with them if they're for example, need to take a, a medical leave, uh, making sure that the students have to be or uh, have all the information necessary to um, to remain in status and remain enrolled. 
um, also providing different opportunities for them to engage with the campus. This includes programs and activities that really focus on the, the international student experience. Um, I really am proud that of our campus that we have had a lot of domestic students um, who work very closely and have built friendships with our international students that they also come to these events to support their friends. Um, we will be putting on International Education Week in the fall, so that's something we're looking forward to. Um, providing some off-campus trips, whether those be seeing the sites, we have some hiking trips. Um, as I mentioned, we're very close to Niagara Falls, um, and also being very involved in the community service and the service learning component. Uh, you know, it's very, you know, very important to us that our international student population is visible to the community, both on and off the campus. So we have a lot of uh, great opportunities we're looking forward to for next year to get these students engaged in service learning, especially especially as an alternate break if they aren't able to travel at a, a long distance back to their country. Uh, so next, I'd like to kind of go over the campus living and dining um, experience on campus. Uh, first year students will typically be housed in Trinity Hall. Um, they're suite styled and double styled rooms. Uh, double styled rooms will share an adjoining bathroom with the room next door to them. Um, each room would have one additional roommate. Um, we never put any more than two people per, uh, per room. Um, given, uh, you know, the student's choice between a suite style and a double style, um, it's on a first term, first come, first serve basis. Suite style is um, essentially there's multiple rooms that share a small living room, um, but it does work out to be the same square footage per individual student. Um, our upperclassmen housing would include St. Joe's. Um, they do have double and quad rooms. Again, it's similar to um, the uh, suite styles and double style rooms. Um, and then uh, single rooms are available uh, subject to availability. Um, and then also as far as our Hilbert College apartments, there's four or five single sex apartments. Each apartment, uh, each student has their own room within the apartment. Each apartment does share a common space and a full size kitchen. Um, and um, there is laundry on site. Um, as you can see, there are um, free parking for students. So if a student wants to bring a car to campus, they're more than welcome to do so. Um, they can bring their bikes, there's free laundry, uh, and there is no curfew. Um, as far as the dining experience goes, um, we have our uh, residence dining hall on campus. It's located in the campus center um, above the bookstore. Um, each freshman that's coming to campus uh, will automatically receive an unlimited uh, meal plan. It's kind of packaged with their housing, their room and board fees, um, but it's it's um, it's uh, it's pretty nice. Um, it's very very intimate. Uh, next, I'm sure you guys, I'm sure you've all been kind of hearing a lot about service learning. Um, Hilbert is very big in um, community based lear or community service. Uh, learning. Basically, um, students will all be required to complete a number of community hours, uh, community service hours before graduation. Um, we do work with a lot really closely with some of our um, closer partners around the community to um, help facilitate some of those learning, uh, service learning opportunities. Um, last year, they did go abroad to um, the Dominican Republic to do some community service as well. Um, but really, the idea behind it is to really um, instill the idea of becoming, kind of looking outside of themselves, um, really just being able to kind of step back and take a look at, you know, the world as a, as a whole, and really be able to kind of provide a well-rounded student to go out and kind of continue this um, kind of service learning outside of the classroom. Um, as mentioned before, um, you know, the Student Life Office offers plenty of opportunities to meet new friends, uh, develop leadership skills, and get involved on campus, uh, as well as make a difference in the community. Um, they also do support resume building and resume workshops. Um, they do, as uh, Leah mentioned before, they do etiquette dinners um, to really kind of um, round the student off as much as possible. Um, if there's a club that a student might be interested in that we might not have for whatever reason, um, it's very simple to start that club. Um, it would just need to go through the Student Government Association. Um, and then in addition to those, we do offer um, uh, concerts and dances throughout the year, uh, special lecture series, um, and uh, parent and family weekend we do once uh, every fall. And then at the end of the year, um, to kind of celebrate the end of the academic year, we do have a quad party that all students are invited to attend. Um, as I mentioned before, we are a Division Three athletic institution. Um, we are a member of the Allegheny Mountain Collegiate Conference and Northern 
or Northeastern Athletic Conference. We do have 15 uh, Division three teams, seven men, eight women. Um, basically, as a Catholic Franciscan institution, the Department of Athletics at Hilbert strives to mentor our student athletes to be successful contributors to their communities while enhancing their physical, social, and intellectual growth and development. Um, our student athletes will graduate with the skills necessary to be affluent leaders, humble learners, and responsible professionals. Um, our coaches are and our administrators are carefully selected in order to serve as a positive role model to our student athletes. The staff is dedicated to teaching our students athletes respect, compassion, good sportsmanship, and accountability. All um, athletes are welcome into our athletic family. And then as far as campus safety goes, we are one of the most safest campus on or in the state of New York. Um, if you uh, remember, we are only about 10, 15 minutes away from the city of Buffalo, so we're in a nice little suburb in the village of Hamburg. Um, Hilbert Campus Safety Pride is a security and safety program that offers round the clock patrol and services to the campus community. Campus safety is responsible for the enforcement of college rules, regulations, and policies. Violations of the law are reported to the town of Hamburg Police Department for uh, further action or appropriate um, uh, appropriate follow-up. Um, so it's our uh, second polls time. So uh, uh, looking forward to your active participation on the same. So uh, as Kim had mentioned, uh, how long does it take to complete a graduate program in Hilbert College? So did Kim mention, uh, will it take 12 months or a year? Or will it take 16 months? Or will it take 20 months? Or will it take 24 months equivalent to two years? That is the usual um, program for a graduate program in US. So let's see uh, the results since it's just a single question. Uh, so we'll close the polls and see the results. OK, so we've got 65% of them telling the right answer. It's 16 months program. So you save eight months, you save the time, and you save the money for the three gradu unique graduate programs that uh, Hilbert College offers. So over back to you to present. Thanks, Jim. Um, so next, we're going to go over the application requirements and the cost of attendance. Um, as far as the requirements go for international um, students or us at Hilbert, um, students will need to complete uh, the application for admission. Um, in addition to that, they will need to submit their official secondary schools and post-secondary transcripts to a third party such as West or World, Ed World Educational Services for them to evaluate and um, send off to us so that we can uh, determine scholarship eligibility. Um, in addition to that, we do require the TOEFL um, exam score um, or an IBT score. Um, and that's just to make sure that the student is uh, English proficient to an acceptable standard at the college. Um, the last thing we want is a student to not be um, proficient enough to understand the material and essentially um, fall behind or even fail the course. Um, and then we do also recommend sending in SAT, ACT scores, but they are not required. Um, letters of recommendation as well as a personal statement. Um, once we get all of that information, um, I will, you know, evaluate the student's um, uh, application and then once the acceptance decision is made um, we will kind of step in and then she will kind of help um, facilitate the next process. Um, Lee did you want to touch on the yeah um, and I did want to just mention as well um, something that we were discussing a little earlier is um, you know for students who have taken maybe the IELTS courses we are they are able to take that exam online currently they are providing that virtually for students to take um, so if students have taken the necessary or meet all the necessary requirements for that um, they are able to take that and have that sent to us. Um, so after the acceptance decision is made, uh, we send the acceptance letter. If the student qualifies for any scholarships, we let them know as well. Um, so the next steps include their their um, enrollment fee at 275 US uh, um, enrollment fee. Um, the next steps include the student providing financial records as well. Um, once we receive the uh, the financial records, the enrollment fee, and the paperwork for their I-20 information, I will then go ahead and I will process their I-20 and create it. Typically, that would be sent via FedEx, but because of what's going on right now, CVIS has allowed uh, us to send uh, electronic I-20s to the students, um, so we can get that a lot sooner to the students so they can, you know, hopefully set up those visa interviews soon. 
um, still in here on, on some of the uh, reopenings of those consulates, um, but this is going to make the process a lot uh, smoother and um, faster what, with what's going on for students to um, go about that. So that's going to, that's pretty much the Hilbert portion. They then have to pay certain fees through CVS um, as well as for their visa interview. So those are separate. Those are more on the um, on the uh, federal and uh, country basis, um, but this will, you know, the Hilbert process will will secure your spot um, for the incoming class. Um, look, it looks like, you know, we right now we have about a August 1st for fall term deadline for the I-20 applications and paperwork and December 1st for spring. Um, we're going to see what those dates uh, look like a little bit closer, especially with you know, the current situation and on countries and the world reopening really. Um, but, you know, we're aiming for students to um, put their deposit down well before then so we can issue those I-20s and students can get those, uh, you know, all the other steps taken care of as soon as possible. And I'd also like to just jump back in and mention, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just, I know that institutions are accepting Duolingo as English proficiency scores um, or as far as um, proof goes. Um, I think we're a small enough institution where we kind of are able to um, make uh, judgment calls. You know, we did have a student not too long ago um, where we did a, um, a Zoom interview with. Um, like I said from the beginning, we just want to make sure that the student's going to be successful here. Um, if a student's coming from an English-speaking country where it's their native language, um, you know, MSM manager can recommend that, the, that we waive that requirement. Um, again, again, and I can't stress this enough, it's just we want to make sure that the student is successful. Um, and so if, you know, given the current situation with COVID-19, um, you know, we have the ability to be flexible as far as what those requirements look like. On the graduate side, there's just a few additional requirements that we need in-house before we can make an admission decision. Um, besides all of the transcripts, which uh, you know I'm sure you're very familiar with, we need two letters of recommendation. And I will be also forwarding to Jim, we have a form fill. If somebody would like to use that instead of a formal letter, that makes it uh, much easier at this time. Uh, we'd like to see a current resume and then a personal statement. You know, why do they want to come and take one of our programs? What do they want to use with our, you know, their goals for their program? So we look at that for writing style. We look at, because the graduate program deals with a lot of writing. So we want to make sure that a student is proficient enough to be able to keep up with um, the demands of the program. So the personal statement also, you know, it, it helps us evaluate, are you, they in the right program? You know, we're about putting the right person in the right seat on the right bus going in the right direction. Um, so that is, that's kind of our goal at Hilbert, um, you know, to make sure that this program is a fit for them and we can evaluate that through their um, personal statement directly to Hilbert. Um, so just to kind of go through real quick, um, some of the student scholars or some of the international scholarships that students might be qualified for. Um, our top merit-based scholarship is called, is underneath the um, Hilbert Scholar. Um, they need a 3.5 or higher to receive a $10,000 merit-based scholarship in addition to a $1,500 housing scholarship. Uh, if they fall between a 2.5 and a 3.499, uh, they would get the they would receive the provost merit-based scholarship for $4,000 in addition to a $1,500 housing uh, scholarship. And then lastly, if they do not meet uh, either of those two um, and they fall between a 2.499 or less, uh, they'll receive our international scholar scholarship. Um, there is no merit-based award associated with that. But they will be receiving a $5,000 housing award. If the student chooses to not live on campus um, after their um, after they complete a couple of years with us, then they would they would not receive um, any additional uh, uh, funding for that. Um, and again, these scholarships are only for undergraduate students. Um, so for our uh, cost of education, um, as you can see here, um, this is the estimated cost for undergraduate uh, students to attend Hilbert College. Tuition and fees is 24750 um, Housing and meal plan is $10,290. Uh, international services fee is a $2,000 fee, um, in addition to a $2,000 book, personal expenses and transportation fee. And then we do require uh, students to have health insurance on campus. Uh, so if they cannot provide adequate health insurance on their own, um, then they would be forced to purchase the one through the college, which would be about $1,200. So all said and done, it's about $40,220 for the um, attendance for undergraduates. 
same will cover the graduate costs. And the graduate costs, what we have done is um, our tuition and fees are total for the whole program. So the 16-month program is 24940 So that's not per year. That's actually for the four semesters that the student is enrolled with us. The housing and meal plan, if they choose to live on campus, there is an international service fee, um, $1,000 a semester. So that's where we come in with the 4000 and estimated for books, personal expenses, transportation. And then again, the students are required to have health insurance just like they do for the undergrad. So this is an estimated total, and this is more of a grand total for the entire graduate program. Um, and then if you uh, have some time, um, we do offer a virtual tour on our website um, if you wanna jot that down. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. Um, there are a couple of updates that have uh, taking place over our campus since the virtual tour was filmed. Um, we did off, we did, um, we did move some offices around as well as at a grab and go uh, coffee station um, in one of our academic buildings. Um, so if you want to take a virtual tour, if you have students that want to take a virtual tour, you they can do so um, at this website. And I will turn it back over to Jim. So thank you uh, for that uh, detailed presentation. Uh, so I'd request all the attendees to drop in your uh, queries or if you want additional informations or any further clarifications on whatever the presentation is given or anything related to Hilbert College, I'll request all of you to put in your questions in the Q&A session. So we already have a few uh, really interesting questions that uh, we hope to uh, touch on at least a little bit. So the first one is, um, they want to know what are the accreditations that are available. I, is, uh, first, they want to know about uh, Hilbert College's accreditation and then if any specific programs have different type of accreditations that are available. Could you, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, the accreditations, the accreditations, uh, what Hilbert College uh, is having. The accreditations, like um, uh, for example, if your um, accounting, uh, no, if your uh, if your criminal justice program is got is accredited with any of um, uh, the U.S. Uh, syllabus. Oh, you're talking about yeah. third-party accreditation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Hilbert Hilbert College is accredited by the uh, Middle States um, Middle States Accreditation for Higher Education, which is a low uh, accrediting body for the um, multiple areas within the United States. Uh, so within our region, we have to meet uh, requirements set forth by the New York State Department of Education, uh, and then also the Middle States Commission for Higher Education. Uh, there are site visits where they come in, they do a full study uh, uh, on a recurring basis. Uh, they do mid-year reports and basically make sure that not only are we meeting the needs for our students, but uh, we're doing everything that we're, say, we're saying we're doing as far as job placement, uh, the proper coursework, is it effectively aligned with uh, the needs of society, and are we training students properly for the fields that they're looking to go into. So uh, we do have that accreditation that happens routinely. It is a requirement in order for us to be able to offer our degrees uh, within New York State. Yeah. Uh, and for any specific programs, do you have any ad additional accreditations? Uh, at this time, we do not. Uh, we are currently, as uh, William had mentioned earlier, we do. Uh, we just brought on our biology program, and uh, we are looking to. Uh, we are looking into additional accreditation for that program. Uh, but in addition to that, we are uh, in the process of uh, partnership with Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine, uh, which is going to allow our students who are looking to come in to get early acceptance into medical school, dental school, and also pharmacy school. So um, I know accreditation does uh, is helpful. I know a lot of students in multiple areas and families are looking for that accreditation because you know they feel it gives additional strength to the program. Um, I will say that, you know, it, it, it does cost additional funding and additional resources to get those accreditations. So, you know, they do become paid accolades. Um, I will assure you that our programs are incredibly strong. And uh, the biggest point that I can make is that more than 96% of our students 
are getting jobs directly in their field or advancing their education, uh, which not all students are qualified to do within six months after they graduate at from Hilbert College. And, so and our and programs. Most, oops, sorry, Brian. Oh, I was just going to say no, most okay. Go uh, all of our faculty members are in the field currently. Um, you know, they they teach as well as work in the field or have had an entire lifetime of experience that they've now brought into the classroom full time. So the students really are getting those, uh, uh, you know, especially those experience through their faculty and gaining those networking opportunities and getting to get out in the community based, you know, from those relationships that they build. Sure. Uh, so um, and, and certainly. Uh, in in these days, you know, it's all about practical experience. And as Lee mentioned, you know, certainly, um, you know, our our faculty do participate in research. Um, it's not a requirement, but the great thing is that certainly textbook textbook knowledge is taught. Classroom theory is taught. Uh, it's important to have that. But what's great is that our faculty members are also practitioners. So they're able to help our students apply, not only teach them the theory uh, that's required in their program, but also apply that theory to practice. Uh, and that's really and truly where learning happens. And as part of the Hilbert College Blueprint, uh, the Hilbert College Blueprint is part of the capstone is our internship opportunities. So um, when we even look into our forensic science program, we have students that are called out of class because they have to go to a crime scene and do crime scene photography for the local police, uh, the local police department. Uh, and, you know, you, you can't you couldn't pay for that experience. And they look to Hilbert College for these experiences. Uh, and this goes for all of our programs. Um, you know, our education is top notch and um, it provides students with a, a real world, the real world experience they need and more so the confidence uh, that they'll need to obtain jobs after they graduate. Sure, thank you so much. So coming to the second question is that, uh, how much value does a, a program, if it is an undergraduate program or a graduate program, how much value does it um, uh, give uh, if they uh, if they're looking out for a job outside of us let's say an example of india so this is an attendee who's asked from india i mean i well, would let's definitely just say um the experience itself, I mean, not only having the American, you know, having gone through the American education system, but then, you know, really because field experience is something that's really a big component of our programs, um, having that experience within like the the industry, I'm sorry, the industries, the organizations of the American industry. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've talked to students, um, you know, who say that they look, seek that, that experience so they can take it to their home country so they can contribute to their community. Um, so I definitely think that that's a, a very large component of why students you know, seek out this experience um, and then they complete that experience and take it home and you know, have that impact on their community, um, you know, be the change that they wish to see. Yeah, so uh, the next question is uh, related to the graduate programs. Uh, so they want to know what is the job prospect in US after they complete the three graduate programs from Hilbert College. Lee, do you want to take that from the international side of working in the US? Um, well, so that'll depend, of course, um, because students will have the opportunity for OPT, um, especially graduate students, they'll have that OPT option to stay a bit longer. Um, so OPT is primarily something that our undergraduate and graduate students try to take towards the end of their studies because it allows them to stay longer, receive that, uh, you know, receive, uh, a, you know, they're making a paycheck, they're getting the experience, um, they're really building upon the skills and knowledge that they've that they've received. Um, so for the graduate students, um, in, the, in terms of the placement, I, I don't have an exact number for you um, because typically that's a, that's a temporary um, uh, aspect to it. Once a student completes their studies and they complete their OPT, they are required to return back home. Um, that being said, you know, students have completed their OPT. And then I, I was just speaking to a colleague at a different college last week. Um, students uh, come here, they do their undergraduate studies, they even remain for their graduate studies, and they go through the process and become an American citizen. Um, so it's something that a lot of, you know, a lot of folks do seek out to 
um, you know, they, they get really invested in their education and their career and they make it a part of their, of their life to, you know, uh, some return home and some uh, remain in the States and go through the citizenship process. Yeah, so if you could also give a little more clarity on what type of industries that these uh, students can uh, avail uh, job opportunities, like if they complete a master in public administration, what would be their roles in particular institutions and what type of institutions it would be? Kim, I'll hand it back to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, people who have a degree is a master's of public administration. I always say that's kind of the sister side to the MBA because most people have heard of the master's of business. Again, this is in the public sector. So our students are working on a lot of nonprofit agencies. They're, that program deals a lot of with um, understanding, writing, implementing policy within organizations. So uh, especially coming... The students starting this fall are going to have a, a wonderful experience because we have a lot of policies that have just quickly been written um, during, you know, because of the COVID. So they're working in different agencies, um, you know, maybe food banks, maybe they're working at hospitals, maybe they're working at um, health clinics, setting up um, COVID testing, you know, so these are the types of jobs that, you know, Obviously, it's one more tool in the toolbox. We don't ex expect somebody to walk out of with the master's degree and get the corner, the big corner office. So it, um, you know, it builds their confidence, as we had mentioned earlier. It builds their skills so they can enter a workforce and and see where it goes. You know, we've a lot of students have left and they work in the human resources because that's that seems to be a big draw within our program. Um, or they're running for political office. And you know, these are skills that are very transferable back to their home country. You know, we live in a global society now, and the students that you're recruiting for us are bringing a whole set of different experiences. So our students and our US students gain a lot of advantage from also working with the international students because then that becomes that cohort model. So now all of a sudden they've made professional colleagues who may be living in another country. And um, you know, so we're doing a lot of it as a, as a comparison to the US and how our programs and industries are run. Sure, thank you so much. Uh, coming to the next question, it's about the on-campus uh, job facilities that are uh, given for international students. And also uh, want a suggestion on what would be that ideal um, time like uh, will it be the after completion of the first semester or after completion of the first year that you would recommend these international students to start working on campus sure um i can speak to that i worked with several students uh, in the past few months in terms of uh, that so i work very closely with the students in terms of getting all their paperwork together paperwork that they already have um you know their their passport their visa um, making sure that they fill out all the necessary forms and getting a social security card um, our students are required to have that social security number in order to work and be able to you know be paid um, so i just went through this process with the, as i said with some students recently um, so it's a it's it's you just have to it, it's easier than it seems uh, it sounds more complicated but it, it's a very easy process um, i had a student who went was there was at the office not long at all that they needed to submit for it got it less than two weeks later and was able to start working um, it's really dependent on the student uh, i think that you know students can it, it is obviously in the fall that you'll see um uh, and end of spring that you'll see um, jobs start to open up on the campus because of students who are graduating, um, students who are, you know, maybe dropping their hours because they have internships. Um, so it, it really is up to the student what, you know, what their needs are and what they prefer. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it's again, it's a very simple process. We get all the paperwork. To, I work with the student to get all the paperwork together. Um, of course, students are limited to that on campus. Uh, you know that on-campus employment because of being an international student uh the the off-campus uh permissions are it's you know you have there's a lot of uh um requirements that they have to meet uh, you know proving economic hardship and that's only after one full year of enrollment um but it's yeah it, it's really up to the student um I, I know that some students really want to jump into it and start making some money right then and there so they can, you know, contribute to their bank account and make sure that they have the funds necessary um, while they're while they're in the US. Um, we've had students who have started 
within, you know, who have gone through the process as soon as they got here. We've had students who have maybe settled in after a semester and started working. It's 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 up to them. Uh, definitely recommend, you know, getting kind of adjusted to your to your courses and everything and your schedule. Um, but yeah. Sure. Thank you so much for that brief. Um, the next question is related to uh, the CPT, the curricular practical training. So uh, does international student, for example, they get into an undergraduate program or a graduate program. Do they get opportunities for the CPT and uh, are they paid or how is how is the trend usually for international students? That depends on each, um, that depends on really on each of the opportunities that they seek out. Several students do kind of look within that CPT where they can be getting the experience, but also be able to make some money as well. Um, they have to, you know, find organizations that we can work with to get, you know, get a mutual agreement signed so we that we verify that everything is, you know, every, we're all meeting the necessary regulations. Um, it, it depends. Um, students can uh, you know, have a CPT opportunity that pays, and maybe not so, um, and maybe not. Um, it really depends on what opportunities are available. Um, I would say that students do try to look more for so of uh, those ones that uh, that are paying. Um, both our international and our domestic students look for that. Um, but yeah. Sure. Thank you. Uh, the next question is related to the STEM-related programs. So, what are the STEM-related programs that are available? And are the graduate programs a STEM related program? William, do you want to talk about the undergrad? Yeah, sure. So, um, as far as the STEM related programs go, um, we just added a biology program that would fall under that. Um, that is the only program that would be housed under that category. Um, the biology program, again, uh, will be, we are going to be starting it, I think, in the fall. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brian. Um, but once we get that up and running and once we get going with that, I think we're going to, you're going to start to see a little bit of a, um, a shift into more STEM opportunities with us. Um, as far as graduate programs though, um, I'll let Kim. Yeah, our, our program is our administrative, so they don't, our graduate programs right now do not concentrate in the STEM area. Um, just to add to the undergraduate, um, our forensic science program is considered uh, under the STEM pro uh, as a STEM program. Um, more, especially our laboratory science, uh, because it's very, uh, it's got a heavy foundation in chemistry, uh, biology, biochemistry. So it's it is STEM related. Um, as William mentioned, the biology program that we just brought on board is um, officially. Uh, approved by the State Department of Education. So that's officially on our roster. Students can apply, be accepted, and be offered a spot in the biology program for this upcoming fall. Um, you know, it is a larger commitment for us as uh, we have invested uh, lots and uh, several resources in, uh, into this program, including a state-of-the-art uh, laboratory uh, that was built specifically for this program. Uh, to be able to accommodate our larger general chemistry, uh, our re uh, doing biological research, uh, mm -hmm. which is a very big component too for the biology program. If you're not looking to go on to say medical school, there's a lot of research that's involved within the biology program and a lot of different aspects. So there's a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, it's very, biology is very popular here. Um, and from my experience in working with uh, international students, biology is a very popular track that students are looking to get into. I do also yeah. want to mention that we have a, a very large medical, um, both, pra both practicing and research-based community out in the Buffalo area. Um, we have uh, several of the uh, institutions that house that, that practice and that research very near, very close to each other and a very short distance from the college. Um, so I definitely do want to highlight that there will be opportunities um, within that as well, both on and off the campus. Yeah, uh, the, does the computer related programs come under the technology side and will it be categorized as a STEM related program? I guess um, I'm looking at it from a perspective of the New York State Department of Education, but I mean, personally, I would I would include our computer security and information assurance as well as cybersecurity under science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Um, you know, it's not because if it was computer science, that I think it would be a different story. And, um, 
you know, I, I believe, actually, I believe New York State Department of Education does include cybersecurity into that as well, uh, because it had, does have a heavy foundation in computer science. Uh, within the first two semesters, uh, there's one computer programming class that's done uh, at each semester for the first two years within cybersecurity, um, as well as computer security and information assurance. So yes, those are included under that. Sorry. Yes. So really great points. Uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time. So we were able to address a few of the questions, but we have all the questions that were uh, posted or logged in by our attendees, and we'll be responding to those unanswered, unanswered queries through our admission executive. Uh, her contact details will be shared, and uh, you can get in touch for all queries uh, or any application related or any sort of resor uh, resources that are required. Uh, of Hilbert College. So, Brian, Kim, William, and Lee would request your closing lines for the webinar. Sure, I will start. We want to thank you for taking the time to join us today and learn a little bit more about Hilbert College. Um, we look forward to you being a partner with us. You know, you're part of the team. So, you're part of the Hilbert College admissions office, and we certainly appreciate all you're doing. Um, we wish you well. Um, I wish you health and your family's health and um, obviously that's the most important and um, and then when it, the time is right get out there and uh, and work with us and we look forward to working with you William yes and okay oh, hi. you go um, next William. I mean I can um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming okay uh, <laughs> um, uh, really like Tim said you guys are our partners so um, if there's anything that we can do to help in your efforts, uh, please let us know. Um, but again, um, please stay safe, and um, hopefully we can all weather the storm together, and we'll we'll be working very closely in the future. Brian. Um, again, yeah, thank you all for attending the session. Uh, hopefully it was very informative for you. If for some reason, if there are pressing questions that we weren't able to get to for you today, uh, please feel free to forward them to Jim and uh, Jim will forward them to our to us. Uh, we will do our best to get back to you, get answers to those questions. But, um, you know, I do want to just reiterate that we are very personalized in our approach in working with students. Uh, obviously, every country is different, every location is different, so the process might be a little different for every student, but uh, we are uh, committed to every student that's applying uh, to make sure that we can set forth the best possible educational path for them, uh, and we want every student that's coming in here to be successful. So. Um, we'll do our best to help every student through that process uh, and we'll assist uh, both Jim and any manager necessary uh, to be able to help those students find the, the, the correct education for them at Hilbert College. But thank you for attending today. Yeah, and I just kind of want to reiterate everything that everyone said. Um, we really appreciate virtually meeting with you today. Um, I hope that you and your loved ones are remaining safe and remaining healthy. Um, as William kind of said, you know, we will get through this, we'll weather this together, um, and we will come out on the other side. Um, but we really do appreciate the hard work that you have been doing. We look forward to working with you further. Um, again, I hope that you remain safe and healthy. And thank you so much for, you know, being our partners and doing all the hard work that you do. Sure. So uh, thanks, Kim, William, and Lee for this wonderful presentation and Brian's participation for this webinar. So before we sign off, uh, we at MSM are super excited to introduce to you the Agent e Summit 2020 live and would request all of you to follow us on our Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube platform to stay updated on our upcoming events. You can also visit our website, www.msquaremedia.com, to get further updates. So thank you for participating in today's webinar. We hope to see you again next time. Stay home, stay safe. Uh, thank you so much for this participation.